It winds almost 100 miles from its headwaters in Tipton County to the Wabash River. It is considered the most beautiful natural waterway in Indiana. It has served generations as a source of food and water, transportation, drainage, ice, mechanical and electrical power, and recreation. It is Sugar Creek, and this is its story in Montgomery County, Indiana. Sugar Creek is a creation of the Ice Age. The last thousand foot thick sheet of ice to extend into present day Indiana, known as the Wisconsin Glacier, began to melt away about 10,000 years ago. The resulting water collected in the low lying areas of the ground created by the retreating ice flow. These waters cut channels through the earth to each lowland area. Slowly following the glacier's northeasterly retreat, Sugar Creek, along with its tributaries, was born. Into this newly created primeval landscape, prehistoric people came to hunt, fish, and gather plants from the clear waters and dense forests of what would become Montgomery County. Archaeological remains show us that they lived in small settlements and eventually began to cultivate the land along the creek, growing corn, beans, squash, and other crops to supplement their diet. These cultures, known as Paleo-Indian, Archaic, Woodland, and Mississippian, existed from at least 8,000 BC. The people living along Sugar Creek in the 1700s and early 1800s were primarily of the Miami Nation. Hunting the richly forested grounds, growing corn and other crops in small clearings, and trading furs with the French and later the British and Americans, the Miami were known to be friendly and helpful to white people. Those living in what is now Montgomery County were considered to be a part of the Eel River Miami. They called this rocky little river Sanaminji Sipiwi, Sugar Maple River, for the many maple trees growing along its banks. The Miami harvested sap from these trees in late winter to boil into sugar. So we find that from the beginning, people living near Sugar Creek have recognized its sweetness. Sanamin Gisipiwi, Sugar Maple River, translated into French by the voyageurs who paddled its waters and traded with the Miami, became Riviere de Rambliere, River of the Sugar Maple Groves. To the English-speaking people, it was simply Sugar River, Sugar Tree Creek, or Sugar Creek. Some early white residents called the stream Rock River. However, the historical record shows only a few references to this name. The first survey of Montgomery County to call the stream by name refers to it as Sugar Creek. And the earliest official Indiana maps label it Sugar Creek as well. Considered a part of the United States following the Revolutionary War, Sugar Creek became a part of the Northwest Territory in 1787 and a part of the Indiana Territory in 1800. My great-great-grandfather was Henry and he'd been a lieutenant in, in uh, Harrison's Rangers. And he and Major Whitlock and uh, Captain Dunn went through here in 1813 to sort of scouting for uh, General Harrison. And, uh, and this comes down as oral history, but I know it's true. They were walking along the uh, south bank of Sugar Creek and they came across the spring, the springs, and they said to each other, this is a wonderful spot and when we and when this war is over, the War of 1812 is over, and we have a chance, we're going to come back here. And that they did. They came back in 1823. Whitlock, Dunn, and Ristine were greatly impressed by the beauty of the location, the potential of the stream to power mills, and the healthy elevation of the bluffs. 
When Ambrose Whitlock left the Army, he became a federal land agent in Terre Haute. Recognizing the northward trend of settlement, he purchased the area surrounding the old campsite at Sugar Creek and convinced government officials to move the federal office from Terre Haute to his newly platted town of Crawfordsville. Selling land along Sugar Creek at a dollar an acre, Whitlock was receiver of public lands, and Williamson Dunn joined him as registrar. Henry Ristine also joined his former comrades in 1823, opening the first tavern in town, which became the center of commerce for the new community. At the time, Crawfordsville was one of the only settlements between Terre Haute and Fort Wayne. Montgomery County's new settlers needed reliable transportation routes to get their farm produce to market and to bring goods into the growing settlement. Sugar Creek was the natural solution. For uncounted years, the waterway had provided an easy route for Indian canoes. Now it would forge a link with the rest of the new nation. 95% of all Americans at the time were farmers, and those in the western states, such as Indiana, needed a solid market to sell their goods. That market was New Orleans, accessed each spring with home-built flatboats drifting down Sugar Creek on the spring rises to the Wabash, Ohio, and Mississippi rivers. Without canals, without railroads, forced to travel roads filled with mud, ruts, and stumps through thick wilderness that led to eastern markets only after the rugged Appalachian Mountains were crossed. Montgomery County's early settlers chose the quicker and easier float by boat. Flat boats, shallow draft craft that could only go downstream with the current, carried goods down Sugar Creek away from area farms. To bring goods upstream, a narrow rounded bottom boat known as a keelboat was required. A few early attempts were made to bring keelboats up Sugar Creek using poles, oars, and ropes to move them along. But the swift current, rocks, and sandbars made navigation challenging. Settlers had to rely on the unreliable roads for incoming supplies. The same current that worked against keelboats coming upstream worked wonders for powering mills. Sugar Creek falls about five feet every mile, making it one of the swiftest streams in the state. Many grist mills sprang up along the creek banks, grinding corn and wheat into meal and flour for local farmers. These mills were crucial to the economic success of the developing agricultural economy. Saw mills and woolen mills were also present. The only mill building still standing on the banks of Sugar Creek today is Yunt's Woolen Mill. Built in 1849, this mill was the center of a large manufacturing operation that not only converted farmers' fleece to woolen blankets, but also supplied uniforms to the Union Army during the Civil War. It remained in operation for over 50 years.